Hey there everyone, it's Mediette West and I'm here today to do a quick video, well maybe it's not going to be very quick, um, because I wanted to share a little bit about my story, about how I ended up becoming a relationship coach and um, to show you why the, the system that I use I believe is really powerful and quite different from what a lot of uh, relationship experts are talking about. So I'm going to start way back. So it's, it started for me uh, probably when I finished university. I went traveling with my hus my now husband. He wasn't my husband then. We went traveling to uh, different parts of the world. And for the first time, I really, um, my eyes were open to just you know, different from my little part of the world that I grew up in and had lived my entire life. So um, it was a huge growth time for me and um, what I really wanted was during that whole time was for, you know, to confirm that I was going to be marrying my husband, that we were going to have a place to live, my career, all the things that, you know, I was really wanting to create for myself. I thought I knew what I wanted and how I wanted it to be. So fast forward a few years, we did end up moving together, my partner and I, to Australia. And uh, I started my teaching career. That's what I'd gone to university for. And it was really an amazing experience. Um, however, there were parts of that time that really started to become very, very, very uncomfortable for me. I realized, and it's making me sweat even thinking about it, um, how I just could no longer fit in. You know, it was one thing in the classroom where the kids would call me out on my accent or the way I said things or, you know, just was, which was just very different from their Aussie, you know, way of saying things. So I, I stood out and the kids called me on it regularly, which was really uncomfortable for me because up until that point, I had always really um, tried to fit in. I didn't want people to, I didn't want to be different. I didn't want to stand out. I, I just really uh, enjoyed kind of being in the background, so that was my comfort zone. And it happened very quickly, and I realized very quickly that I could not fit in in Australia. And it was fine in the classroom, but it was when I was out in the world with the people I, were, I was meeting. Um, not only was I the Canadian amongst all these Australians, I was also, you know, the, the small town country bumpkin that, um, you know, just was very different from the people that I was surrounding myself with. And I tried desperately to fit in and just couldn't. So I started to feel really, really uncomfortable. And I couldn't really figure out why I was feeling just so out of sorts. And uh, at that time, a friend of mine introduced me to life coaching. And I'd never heard anything about life coaching before. I didn't know what it was. I was doing it for her. I was doing it um, just, to, just to see what this was all about. I was intrigued for whatever reason. And it was amazing because within the first 30 minutes, this life coach completely woke me up. It was powerful. And I realized in that, that moment when she really challenged a couple things about the way I was being, and that how I really was leading a life that was setting me up to fail over and over and over because I was always comparing myself to everybody else and needing to be different depending on who I was comparing myself to. So it, it constantly changed. I could not really find who I was in all of this. I was just trying to be somebody else who obviously was better than me. So this was uh, an eye-opener, and it was the first time I realized that I had control over creating the life that I wanted. I didn't really think about that before. I just kind of assumed, you know, things were the way they were because that's the way they were. I didn't really think about having power to create. So that was the, the, the first major aha I had. And at that moment, I knew I wanted to be a life coach. And I, you know, it, it didn't actually happen right then and there. I was pregnant. I was um, you know, things just weren't, the timing wasn't right, but something had been triggered in me that I really couldn't let go of. 
So fast forward a few years later, and my husband, my now husband, we were married, um, with two little babies, decided to move back to Canada. And life carried on. We, you know, moved to a new community. We were busy with our young children, and I was back to teaching. And, um, you know, forgot a lot about, about the life coaching. And then um, health issues popped up for me. And I was... I didn't have a choice but to leave teaching. So teaching wasn't something that I can continue on with with this the situation with my health. So I gave up teaching and it wasn't long after that that I was reminded about my life coaching interest. My sister had introduced me to Martha Beck, who I didn't know anything about, and reminded me she was a life she is a life coach and reminded me about my desire to be a life coach. And I was like, "No, that's my dream." So together uh, coming from two different ways into it, we both decided to do the training to be Martha Beck life coaches. And that's when, you know, the next aha for me was massive. So during our training, we really had to do a lot of our inner work. And I didn't really know what that was. Um, but through the training, you know, this was something that we, we did. And I dove right in to really uncovering the things that were getting in my way and um, I did a lot of work around myself and what I needed to do to be who I was and to love that person and to show up fully so that was that was an amazing um, journey for me now I'm a relationship coach and I didn't start out as a relationship coach so I wanted to share how that actually happened so um, it was about this time as I you know, was, had given up teaching, I was pursuing a life coaching career, I was doing a lot of inner work and I was sharing with everybody because I loved it so much, um, that things started to go a bit awry in my relationship. So you know, we had two little kids at this time, I was, had health issues, um, and I was requiring my husband to to support me in a way that I thought I needed him to support me. So I I remember the day very clearly. I was really tired. I went up to have a nap and my husband was with the kids and I had just settled in to have a, a rest and the kids were loud. There was screaming. There was crying. I couldn't hear my husband at all and didn't know what he was doing down there. And I threw off the covers and I started to march down the stairs to to fix the situation. Not happy that he wasn't dealing with this in a way that, you know, would allow me to rest peacefully. So as I was heading down the stairs, all of a sudden I heard music. My husband had picked up his guitar and had started to, to play a song and the kids quieted down. Everyone started to listen. It was peaceful and I stopped in my tracks and I realized you just about wrecked this situation in the way that I had stormed down the stairs believing I knew how to get the kids to be quiet and how that my husband obviously couldn't and that this was the, that I had to intervene and I had to fix it and I was the only one and I realized it was me that was the issue here and that I was really attempting and had been attempting to control my husband because this was my area I was the parent I was the teacher I was the one who thought I knew how to do this well. And in all that time, I hadn't really let him, given him any space to do things the way he wanted to. And when this day he he decided to do something that completely would not have been how I had, would have done it, and it worked beautifully, I just realized what was going on and how I was trying to force him to be more like me so that I could control the situation and have the outcome I thought, you know, the way it needed to be done and I could have the outcome that I thought we needed. And from that point on, I really shifted my attention in life coaching to relationship coaching. And what I realized is that in this disconnection from myself, I was attempting to, to, to feel whole, to feel enough, to feel like I had something to offer in my parenting role and I needed my husband to to kind of follow suit and let me control the situation and make sure I was 
you know, being the best parent and doing things in the best way. You know, now I'm this life coach and I need to, to, you know, show up in a certain way. And it was then that I realized that, um, I didn't have any control over my husband. I never had. He never ever allowed me to 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 even somewhat shift him. He just was not that kind of person. He's my obviously my biggest teacher, um, and now my kids are too. So when I learned to step out of his business and notice where I needed to reconnect to me so that I could reconnect to him without forcing him to to do things my way or forcing him to change so that I felt comfortable, everything began to shift. And this became my passion and my interest to help other women who really find out that this wedge that's been um, close, you know, separating you from your partner really is stemming from this this desire to to control your partner and when I say control it's not forced necessarily forceful although it can be um, for me it was it was powering over trying to get him to be my way because I thought I knew better it wasn't because I was um, it wasn't out of nastiness or um, being a villain it was just over I think I know best and you need to do things my way and really because my role relied on that. Who I was as a parent and who I was as a wife needed him to follow suit. And uh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. And neither would the kids. So uh, once I really learned to turn the shift, the focus from my partner and the children and what they were and what that meant about me, and obviously I wasn't enough or, you know, who I needed to be if they weren't doing exactly what I thought they needed to do, as soon as I learned that really I could focus on me and find out why I was believing I wasn't enough and doing my work to to be enough no matter what was happening and knowing that I always was and so was my husband and so were my kids. They didn't need to be fixed or changed or any of the above. And when I did that work, I could reconnect back to my partner and really come from this place of acceptance and love for the way he is and not trying to shift or change him and really just honoring and appreciating him for, for, for himself. So today, now this is what I focus on. I focus on helping women who are struggling in their relationship to really shift the attention of trying to change their partner or trying to change something outside of them to get this feeling inside of them. First of all, even realizing this is what we're doing and how we can um, reconnect to ourselves so that we can reconnect to our partner. And we really can't do that deeply until we have done our inner work. We need to get out of our own way. Look what limiting beliefs we have in our of ourselves that stop us from really re are connecting from ourselves so that we can lovingly and openly connect to our partner without things needing to change so we feel better. So... That's my story. Um, I've been coaching now in relationship coaching for about five years and I really am excited to continue sharing more and more tools to help you be able to reconnect with yourself, get out of your partner's business, you know, and really focus on create being the creator of your own life so that you can then come to your partner in a whole different way that is not needy or controlling or victim or needing anything to be different because you're coming whole, meeting your own needs, being vulnerable, being real, and uh, shifting everything, the way the energy is around the relationship. So if you're interested in hearing about more, please send me a message, um, mediate at mediatewestcoaching.com, or send me a, a direct message here on Facebook. All right, everyone, hope you um, got some insight from my story. If you have any questions or you want to share your story, I'd love to hear it. All right, thanks, everyone. Bye.